Hey, welcome to the Drip and Stone podcast, the podcast where two friends raise a glass and have a conversation. I'm Nick. I'm Kyle. Kyle. Hey, Nick. Guess where we are? Uh, well, I mean, we we are in multiple places. I guess you could say everywhere and nowhere all at once. <laughs> well, currently, that is absolutely true. And secondarily, we are not together right now. That's correct. I mean, as as everyone can tell by the uh, the difference in audio quality and sound, you and I are in two separate locales. That's right. We're doing this over the magic of the interwebs. It, it's good to be back <laughs> on the magic of the interwebs. I, I think. <laughs> Is it becoming easier or more difficult? I hard to say. Well, I I can say this: it definitely isn't better. (laughs) Right. Like, like you know, having conversations this way. Like, I I love that we can have conversations with people halfway across the world. We can have conversations and and do um, you know interviews and and get together and do different episodes. But getting together actually with an individual is way better. Oh yeah, for sure. Every time. So you know, I mean, until AI gets better <laughs> yeah I, I'll, I'll say this i've never been in like a a zoom meeting and felt wow that was a really deep connection i had with that person <laughs> right you know we really connected yeah i mean that screen <laughs> well and uh i did a I did a thing the other day i, I did like a three-hour death scroll you know through I, I think it was uh i think it was tiktok through the good old Dreppenstone tiktok algorithm oh yeah yeah it was interesting i bet well what's interesting about it too is like because it's drep and stone uh and it's it's somehow it's like it's, it's tied to you because you were the one who ultimately made the uh the tiktok account first like it's interesting to see the algorithm work through two different people watching it yeah how it can recognize that yeah because it's like you know if you've been on the drep and stone tiktok after a, a little while, it starts to figure out, oh, he skipped by these things, but Kyle would have watched these things. Not that it knows the difference between the two of us, but like, oh, he's watching. But at the same time, it probably does. Like, it probably notices, like, where TikTok is being watched from. Oh. And can, it's probably smart enough to tell, like, you know what? These are actually two different people watching the same account. <laughs> That's not, that, that doesn't make me feel better. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that doesn't seem too far fetched for me. I mean, it's like I guarantee you, like you know, Netflix, Disney Plus, HBO Max, they all know. Yeah, there's absolutely like multiple people watching the same account, and they know when it's you, when it's me, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Again, no doubt in my mind. Again, that does not make me feel good. <laughs> I mean, I mean, th- 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 there's like we we've all had we've had several episodes that kind of dealt with AI and. And just kind of like technology, how it's advancing faster than we can kind of keep track of it. But man, there's been a lot of like AI stuff like hitting the the news feed recently. Oh yeah, that is just bewildering. Yeah, it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Well, and also, I mean, like we've all been in those situations where you like you're talking with, let's say, a product, um, talking about a product with a family member. And like you've never, you haven't looked up anything about this product, and then all of a sudden, the the social media is is showing you that product. It's like, oh my god, right, you're getting ads for it. Yeah, and then and then like I love the explanation of like, well, you know, you've probably looked up something around it that gave it to you. Nah, they're definitely listening for sure. Yeah. They're listening. Alexa, Siri, they're they're picking up on it. Everything you say. I'm surprised that you saying Alexa didn't just turn on my. Oh, I just turned it on. Dang it! Now I don't want to talk to you. Right. Go sleep. Go sleep. No. Uh, got a question. What's that? You want to drink something? Yeah, absolutely, indeed. Well, what do you want to drink? I've got a bottle that I, I picked up in Atlanta, or not Atlanta. I, f- I picked it up in Georgia. Oh, gosh, I want to say it was last summer at this point now, but it's um, it's from ASW Distillery. Ooh. Uh, it, that's a distillery that um, I'd seen pop up on a few different, um, you know, independent bottler or independent um, distillery picks that, you know, if you can find a bottle of it, try it kind of a thing. Sure was traveling through Georgia last summer, found this bottle, absolutely had to pick it up. Um, It's the Fiddler Unison Bourbon Whiskey. Ooh. And this is, it's a blend of high wheat and high malt. High wheat and high malt. Yeah. So, Uh, but she said bourbon, so it's at least 51% corn. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a bourbon. It's a blend of, I think, three different bourbons. Okay. To fine tune this expression, we married a forged high wheat bourbon with stocks of our own bourbon, 
distilled on our Scottish style copper pot stills Ooh. in the heart of Atlanta <laughs> with an especially high malt content. All right. And it said distilled in Georgia and Indiana. So maybe just two different, uh, two different bourbons okay. that they blended together. Georgia and Indiana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like the Indiana is the high wheat and then their blend is the high malt. It doesn't give me percentages on, you know, is that 80% Indiana, 20%. But uh, like I said, I mean, they, they had some pretty high, highly rated lists that I had seen ASW on. Right. So I would like to think that maybe it's closer to like 50, 50, but who knows? You mean in terms of, the high malt and high wheat blend. I mean, in terms of stuff that they distilled versus stuff that they're forging, as they call it. <laughs> gotcha. Forging. Okay. Or they call it sourcing, forging? as I would call it. They call it forging. Forged. Yeah. Okay. As in, like, uh, we married eight? a forged high wheat bourbon. Uh, foraged. Foraged. Foraged, F-O-R-A-G-E-D. <laughs> yeah, that's different. <laughs> Here I am thinking like, y'all forged a high, what? So did you, how, metallurgy's involved? Or did you just like. A little alchemy. Like, like forging a signature. I was confused. Foraged, I, I got you. They went into the forest. Foraged. And they, they found some cast. They plucked it right out of the bourbon bush. There it is. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Um. You said travel, so I'm assuming that we're doing bottles that we've found while traveling? Sure. Because guess what? What's that? I got one, too. <laughs> ah, good call. Yeah, good call. Yeah. It's almost like we planned it. I know. I know. I have the old Overholt bottled in bond. Oh, nice. Who yeah. makes old Overholt? Well, this, sir, is a Beam Suntory product. Hey, yeah, I like a little beam. Yeah, uh, and as far as I can tell, uh, well, I'll give you a little bit of bottle words since you gave me some of yours. Pennsylvania-born, Kentucky distilled. Originally made in western Pennsylvania, the Overholt brand was one of the first American whiskeys to be bottled and bond in 1897. I feel like every bottle and bond whiskey says that. Like, we were one of the first. They've all got, they've all got to throw yeah. it back to the lineage. This guarantees the product is one is of one distiller and one distillery in a single season barrel aged four years at exactly 100 proof. It's non chill filtered, by the way. And they, they like, you know, say that it's to give a richer, fuller flavor. Nice. Yeah. So born in Pennsylvania. Hey, I like, like bottled and bond. Yeah, me too. Um, That's a sweet spot. It is. I don't have any like actual information about the, the season here. I mean, there's a laser code, but I'm not going to do all that work. But sure. I do know that it is Beam Suntory, so it's definitely um, it's at the uh, Jim Beam Distillery is where they are currently distilling it. And in fact, I, I did um, like when I first I first saw this bottle in Kentucky, and uh, it was like a like a sixteen dollar bottle, and I was like, right. okay, all right. And it came up on a couple of lists of like this is a rye that you need to try for under twenty bucks. You know, it was like, right. you know, they, everyone releases those kinds of lists. I was like, sure, right. 16 bucks. You got me. I mean, mellow corn turned out really good and it's 13, yeah. it's 13 bucks. So right. you got me. So that's, that's what I'm going to, I'm going to bring to the table today. Good call. Yeah. And, um, it is, I actually procured this bottle in North Florida on a, on a quick trip, but I first, like I said, I first saw it in Kentucky. So I think that counts as a travel bottle. Is going into a liquor store while you're traveling, is that like a staple? It depends. I, I will say this. Like, I am not normally someone that's going like, gonna to go out of my way to, like, map out a bunch of liquor stores. But as I'm driving or if I'm in an area and I see one, yeah, I'll pop in. Yeah. What, what about you? Same. I mean, it's not anything that I'll, like, uh, I've actually got to, like, make plans to go to this liquor store. Unless it's, like, I've been to the area before and I know that that's a really good liquor store. Exactly. Then I'll obviously make time, but. Um, like actually like the, the, the location where I, I purchased this bottle was one that, um, on that road that I had been on before had stopped and it was, it was not to stop at this store. It was to stop and get gas. And it just happened to be right next door. And I was like, Hey, I'm going to pop over here to the liquor store. It's a fantastic liquor store. And so now whenever I go back up to Alabama, like I intentionally try to take that route. So it'll take me by there. <laughs> and that's what I did this time. I went through there, picked up. Gosh, actually, I actually think I bought like three bottles last time I was in there. Cool place. But I mean, you know, at the same time, if I'm out and about in a city and I see a liquor store, if I'm walking by or something, 
every time. Oh yeah, I'm gonna pop in just yeah. to see what you got, see what's kind of different, get well, the get the kind of vibe of that local liquor scene. I, I also kind of do the like, uh, how much are you guys selling these things for? Kind of game. Like I I know nine times out of ten, if I'm on vacation, I'm gonna go into a liquor store and I'm not gonna buy anything. Like I'm just right. gonna go in and, and look around. And I always like I, I sometimes even text you and like chuckle of like. You see what they're selling this thing for? Like, are you serious? Yep. Or it's also fun to see, you know, what here in Florida is considered like super rare, but in Rhode Island, you can find everywhere kind of thing. Oh, yeah. In Denver, you can find all of this or in Texas, you can find all of this. So it's kind of it's kind of fun to to do that. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I was I was just up in New York City. New York City. We, I mean, we, we were there for two nights. And so we only packed with backpacks. We didn't have any checked luggage. Oh, so that's the I best. knew wasn't going to be bringing any bottles home, but obviously still jumped into a couple of different liquor stores. And like one in particular was an absolute museum kind of a place. It's like, like they, they were just way overpriced, but man, they had some bottles. Like they had everything, every, every Pappy, every, every Buffalo Trace antique collection bottle. They had it all. Uh, but they they wanted a lot of money for all of them. <laughs> of course they did. But it was it was, it was still kind of cool just to see like that kind of a collection of bottles, you know, in 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 the real. It's still kind of neat to see those things. But went into another store that was like the most fair priced store that I've ever seen, definitely in New York City. But like I can almost argue like anywhere. Um, and like and like you're saying, like it was kind of surprising. I mean, I saw I saw bottles of um, Blanton's Gold, and uh, I saw a Blue Spot. Like, I mean, they had all of it too. And it was all fairly priced, but kind of talking to see like what some places have more of. This place had 30 bottles of Eagle Rare. Wow. Tons of Eagle Rare. I think they only wanted like 60 bucks for it. Like, I mean, it was, it was totally fair. It, it, it was kind of wild. That's cool. Yeah. Shall we crack into them? Yeah, let's do it. All right. You first. Here, here goes mine. Ready? It's a twisty. Did you, nice. Did you hear it? Oh, I heard it. All right. You pour. Nice. Ooh, ooh, that's a hefty pour, Nick. That might hey, been, it's late night. We're okay. That, that might have been too much. So I actually featured uh, Old Overholt on um, a uh, pour with drip or stone on Patreon. Oh, very nice. Very nice. This yeah. bottle? I think I did. I, so I've got the, the regular uh, rye and then the... Uh, bottle and bond rye. So I, I don't remember which one I featured, but um, yeah, definitely, definitely old Overholt as a brand. They're both uh, is all old Overholt rye. Uh, yeah, yeah. Is it just a rye label? As far as I know, anyway, that's that's only thing I've ever seen. It's just a rye label. Um, and the the mash bill, as you know, Jim Beam is is want to do, is undisclosed, but it's not one hundred percent rye. Rat. And I, and I I can I know that because as soon as I knows this, it's it's got such a beamy note. Like man, yeah. it just honestly, I had a pour of old granddad last night or the night before, and like this just smells like old granddad if you stuck it in a pine forest. Like if you're drinking old granddad in a pine forest. Interesting. What about you? And I got a bottle of old granddad I need to crack into. Haven't had it in a while. Oh, but I bet it's been over a year since I've had a sip of old granddad. What's wrong with you? Man, just got too many bottles. Ain't no such thing. You ask my wife, she'll tell you that something different. <laughs> what you got on the nose? It being this blend and this high malt blend, like it's definitely you wouldn't confuse it as anything other than bourbon, but it definitely like leans to the side. Mm. It's not spot on bourbon. It's it's got more of a caramelly, malty sweetness to it, and leans more more cherry than like apple. But it's this really interesting rounded caramel note that is not what i would consider a quintessential bourbon caramel note mm. it's just a little bit like lighter a little bit softer whereas like you know i think a lot of times we talk more like darker caramel or getting more into like a brown sugar molasses note with bourbon like this is a little bit lighter a little bit more softer on the edge i like that that sounds delightful. Do you, do you get a yeah. lot of the dusty wheat notes or you think that's the softer yeah. edges? I think, I think that adds to it. It's not as much of a, like a cereal note, like that honey nut oat note, but it definitely has like a, um, kind of like a honey wheat bread kind of note to it. Ooh, honey wheat bread note. 
Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, it's a really friendly nose, yeah. like no, no oak or anything like that on the nose. It's all honey sweetness and just that little bit of extra, like malty, like almost creaminess. Ooh. What, what's your ABV there? ABV, I think is 95. Not bad. No, 90, 90 even oh, okay. 45. Okay. 45 alcohol. Yeah. 90 proof. Gotcha. Yeah. On the nose for me, like going back to the overholt, man, you, you just get that peanut brittle beamy note. And it's it's just it's prominent, and it's I wonder if it's just like it's like soaked into their stills. It, it's got to be. Just like, it's just like a patina, yeah. but every time you cook on it, it just rubs off. Dude, like I, I maintain that if you were to give me a lineup of of just like regular bourbons, I could pick out a Beam product right away. Yeah, like, I feel like the Beam note sticks out more so. Uh, yeah, I feel like. I've had enough turkey at this point. I could probably pick out a turkey, but man, if you say, "Hey, which one's the which one of these is Jim Beam?" I'd put money on it. I could pick it out. Yeah, I agree. It's I just mean, at, it's at this so point distinct. Time, I think I've definitely had more Beam products than anything else. Yeah, at this point, certainly within the past what, like two years, so it's gonna be fresher on the palate. Yeah, there's just there's something about it where you just get this like I don't know, just like peanut brittle, oaky vanilla note that just like. I don't know. It's it's distinct enough from everything else. And like, what's nice about the uh, overhold here is that again, it's accentuated by that that rye spicy nose. No sniffing. Time for some sipping. Uh, sure. Pretty delightful. Like super friendly nose. The palate is not much of a curveball. It's a it's a little bit of a sidestep, if anything. Yeah. Where you do get a little bit of like bitterness coming through on the on the palate. Um, that that oak note starts to become present there but the sweetness and everything matches almost exactly the same so it's just it's just a bit of a sidestep to what the nose is the palate matches it pretty well spot on so nothing nothing jumping out either way no there, there's no spiky notes at all first couple of sips you still get the the proof bite but that mellows out really quick and it's just kind of a nice just kind of smooth arcs of sweet and oak it's almost not even fair to call it really a bitter it doesn't quite reach all the way to bitter. It's just kind of more of just like a really soft bitter, mm. just a subtle bitter. But it never really bites like a like a you know like a strong bitter coffee note or anything like that. It's just kind of more of just like a just an oak. I was gonna say know? like a like a mellow oaky bitter. Yeah, and not like yeah. a deep char, just kind of a a fresher wood note. See, when when you said you know wheat and um, was it it was wheat and MB right? Wheat and high malt. High malt. Okay, to me like. That just screams sweet. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Is a sweet like poking out? No, it's not like a sweet like. It's not like you know. It's bourbon sweet, mm-hmm. but I don't think it's you know. I guess if anything, the sweetness kind of comes down. Like it's. I feel like the sweet is way more prominent on the nose, on the palate though. It's a. It's a much more smoothy, creamy sweetness. Yeah. Not so much like a like a just a saccharine sweet sugar sweet. It's just kind of mellowed out a little bit. Pretty, pretty delightful. Pretty friendly. How, how can I can I ask you how much that bottle was? I think it was only like thirty bucks. And, and that's kind of what you want out of uh, you know a thirty dollar whiskey. You want it to be nice. You want it to be even. You want it to be friendly. Give you all the notes. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, and I and I like the I like the high malt characteristic of it. So it's not you know straight down the middle bourbon. It's just you know it's a little bit to the side of it. Right. And it kind of broadens that spectrum of what bourbon is and can be and just adds a little bit little bit of a different experience. It's super nice. Like I remember they had a they had a bottle, I think it was the same lineup that the same fiddler style. Right. So I'd imagine kind of like the same blend. But this was the year that the Braves won the World Series. So the bottle had like, you know, the the Braves logo on the bottle. I want to say they called it like championship, something or other. Um and I want to say it was more like a, a cask strength, like around like a 110, 115. Yeah. And that, but that bottle was like, I think it was over a hundred. It was more like a collector's bottle. Gotcha. That I would totally at this point with as tasty as this is, I would be willing to spend more money on a higher price bottle, sure. but wasn't, wasn't willing to do that at the moment. As far as you know, is it primarily a Georgia product? I think they were definitely one of the faster growing distilleries in Georgia specifically. I mean, I, I, I do see them on a lot of different distilleries to try lists. Right. But I, I have yet to see anything from them as far as I can think of in Florida. I genuinely don't know that I've ever seen anything in Alabama either. But I think they're growing. 
Cool. So what's that? What's old overhaul giving you, man? So first sip, and you get this really punchy, punchy rye bitter spice, uh, which I, I find really interesting because the the peanut note is still there, but it kind of fades into the background. I'm going to say it's not super high rye. I, it's definitely not 100%, but I'm going to say it's not super high. But I think the combination of uh, at least 51% rye and, and 100 proof is providing like a really nice kind of pop. And then, you know, you're kind of gently let down by the, the peanut brittle note. Some like cinnamon sweet kind of note. Almost like you ever had those... Um, like cinnamon dusted, like graham cracker kind of things. I mean, they're, they're graham okay. crackers, but they got like, like teddy cinnamon. grams. Not quite like sweet teddy grams. Like it's a graham cracker. It's a cinnamon graham cracker. Right. I, that's what it reminds me of. Like it's it's a, not a sweet sweet, but there's like a little bit of a sweet, and then that that rye provides a little bit of a cinnamony note. That's a fun word, cinnamony. Cinnamony. Exactly. My my complaint is this: it's super thin. Mm. Like, you know, you just swirl it in the Glen Cairn a little bit. There's no legs at all. Like it's just toop, right off the right, right off the glass on the mouthfeel. It's just water. I mean, as much as I like those punchy rye notes, I want them to stick around. And as right. soon as you, as soon as you swallow your sip, it's just gone. Like nothing right. stays with you. Doesn't really give you anything to think about. But again, it's like twenty bucks. Right. So yeah, you know, is it? It's kind of expected. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And. It's one of those that, like, would, would I be willing to force myself to check a bag for this? No. But if I were driving in a car and I saw this and I was like, I've never had it before. Sure, why not? Now that I've had it. Or if you're going to be in a place and you want a, a, a whiskey to sip on oh, while perfect. you're there and mm. there's, there's no uh, worries about, hey, I need to finish this bottle because, you know, it's only it's less than 20 bucks. Like, I can just sip on it and get the enjoyment out of it that I need. Oh yeah, could be could be the perfect bottle. That's and that's a really good point. You know, when you're just looking for something that, yeah, if I leave half of this behind, okay, yeah, that's right. that's a good point. I think this occupies that spot. Now I will say this: being that it's a uh, a bib, um, I think that's kind of cool. It does give you you know a nice little bit of a proof. I, I wouldn't say it's a starter rye by any means, but it's it's probably that you know. Be beginning kind of rye journey. I, I think that if you're interested in higher proof rye, it's not a bad place to start. Again, because it's about twenty bucks, and it's it's pretty readily available. I see old, old overhold. Oh yeah, just about everywhere. Yeah, um, I, I think I see anywhere, anywhere that's got a decent selection. Yeah, they should have it. Exactly. I, I know that like your big box liquor stores probably they should definitely have it, uh, especially with it being a Beam Centauri product. You can find it pretty easily. Right. Hey, so since we're currently traveling and we've been doing a lot of travel here lately, I thought it'd be a good time to talk about some of our travel philosophies. What do you think? Ooh, travel philosophy. I yeah, like it. Yeah. Now, I know we've we've spoken a lot about travel. It's something that you and I are pretty well versed in. And, and we've talked about, I think we've done an entire episode on travel and what travel has meant for us and done for us. But I, I want to get into some of the minutia of travel, if if you will. I got you. The, the, the deeper thinking points. Exactly. And um, I've packed a lot of bags here lately. Oh, okay. And it just got me thinking about my travel bag packing philosophy. Interesting. So I want to know your thoughts about like how do you, you know, how do you think about packing a bag? How do you think about like items that you're going to take, you know, checking bags and, and, and just kind of the, the, whole, the whole thing surrounding baggage and, and luggage and travel? All right. Let, let, let me start with a question for you. Okay. For example, we're about to go on a three-week trip. We're a month out right now as recording sits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When will you start packing? Probably like two days before we leave. Okay. See, I'm I'm the same way. Like, I, I'm not a last minute. I'm not like a, you know, I'll wake up that morning and throw shit together. Especially on a trip like this, gargantuan trip that's going to be this this long of a thing. Mm -hmm. it, it definitely needs more thought than your average trip. But... As we're recording this, I just got back from New York, kind of did that. Like the night before, picked out the clothes, laid it out, had that stuff packed into a backpack. Morning of, got the essentials, the, the you know, the deodorants, the toothpastes, all that kind of stuff into the bag. Did one quick check. Do I have my chargers? Do I have everything? All right, good to go. Let's go. Yeah. I, I will actually probably within the next like couple of weeks start to like be thinking about 
clothes specifically. Like if I know I'm going to take that shirt, I'm not going to wear that shirt again. I'm going to go ahead and leave that one off to the side and just save that one for vacation at this point. Gotcha. I won't pack it yet, but I'm just going to start mentally calibrating myself of like, definitely going to be taking that. I feel like my, my packing philosophy is already kind of starting. Yeah. I'm starting to take mental notes of things of like, I definitely need that. Or specifically like on this past weekend, wasn't in absolute love with the shoes that I had. And I'm thinking I might need to get a different pair of just like everyday walking shoes that I think will fit better with this trip. Gotcha. So like I'm already starting to tick off those kind of boxes of like what needs to go, what do you need to get now ready for that trip? Yeah. So, I, you know, I'm, I'm the same in terms of places that I've been before. For example, you know, I've I've been to New York several times. I've been to denver area several times or even places that like i've only been once but i have going i'm going back to i kind of know what to expect trip wise or i know what to expect weather wise and i know what i'm getting into let's say for new york I, i'm gonna probably if it's in the the spring probably gonna need a jacket maybe a light jacket and i'm gonna need some good walking shoes a couple of, of changes of clothes kind of thing like nothing nothing crazy unless unless we plan a like a, a really nice dinner out and i might need you know a nice nice shirt maybe even a, a jacket depending on what we're doing right but for the most part me just in general my uh thoughts and feelings on on clothes are very minimalist i would say oh yeah. yeah yeah so like and and you know people have even commented on uh social media about the differences in you and i in terms of like uh when we you know, have pictures together or, uh, you know, we do stuff on Patreon. It's like Kyle's always well-dressed and Nick's in a, a black or a blue t-shirt. <laughs> like that's what he wears. <laughs> and th that's true. Like that's, that's what I wear. You know, like my kind of standard go-to is a, a black or like Navy blue t-shirt, sometimes gray and maybe a hat, maybe not. And a couple different colors of shorts and jeans and I'm good to go. You know what I mean? Yeah. In general, like my vacation packing mirrors my normal packing anyway, because I only have, you know, my closet. I've got six black shirts. I've got six blue shirts and I've got some dress shirts that are like, you know, work related dress shirts. But I maybe have like six variations of, of those. So it's not like right. I have, you know, a bunch of mixing and matching to think about. And and I, that's for a reason, because I don't want to think about that. Right. You know, put the clothes on. Go. <laughs> Walk out the door. Yeah, Let's go. Exactly. So thought process for this trip um, is a little bit different because it's something that I'm not familiar with. It's places that right. I'm not familiar with. It's things that I, I haven't experienced before. So it's it's kind of one of those things of like trying to think about as many possibilities um, without like driving myself crazy. Because like here yeah. in, in the States anyway, I realize like, man, if I forget – I don't know, let's say it's a four day trip and I brought two pairs of, of boxers. Like I can pop into a Walmart or something and I can be worst okay. case scenario. Yeah. Which yeah. I presume is probably similar in other parts of the world, but I don't know if I want to take that risk. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to be walking around, you know, just uh, without any boxers and nobody wants that <laughs> in the summertime. Woo. We call that a chafe city. <laughs> 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 but that's a really good point. Like, especially too with, with all the different locations that we're going to, we're going to Europe. We're going to be, you know, you know, in your, in, in your case, like as, as far North as Ireland, which, you know, if you come straight across latitude, lat, latitude wise, you know, you're in Canada. Yeah. You know, so you, you're, you're, you're talking about, you know, in a, in a climate there and then all the way down to Greece, which is like, you know, almost equal with Florida. Yep. Huge difference, huge yeah. difference of temperatures, of climates, of, you know, just day to day weather. You've got to try to like pack, uh, you know, and, and and somewhat be prepared for any of it and all of it. Like I'm OK with overpacking to some degree, but like I also know that like, man, do I need 15 pairs of jeans? Nah, I don't need that. Well, I don't I don't necessarily necessarily mean like that. I mean, more in terms of like definitely going to need a raincoat. Right going to need to have sunscreen going to need to have like it's just the different kinds of climates that we'll be in absolutely how vastly different they are i mean we did a very similar trip a few years back and we were amazed that in you know the end of may that 
or no, I guess it was the same time period. It was, you know, beginning of June that there were days in London that were in the fifties. Right. And we were freezing, you know, coming from hot, humid Florida into the fifties in our t-shirt and shorts, we were freezing. Like we had to stop and get uh, sweatshirts for the kids. Cause they were just literally like, couldn't handle it. Teeth chattering. And I mean, but you know, and, and, and I guess that's more like what you're saying too, of just like, you know, in a worst case scenario, you swing into a store, you buy a thing. Right. We swung into the gap. We bought some uh, sweatshirts that were like 50% off because again, it was May. So not really like the height of sweatshirt season right. anywhere, but they, they freaking use those sweatshirts <laughs> that whole, that whole few days there. Um, okay. So are you generally someone who will, or who wants to check a bag? Generally, I would rather not. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very much, I think like you, when it comes to packing, of i would rather be underpacked than overpacked and like if i need a thing when i get there i'll make it work i'll find something and i'll I'll just pick it up when i'm there because i would rather i would i absolutely don't want to be overpacked i don't want to be lugging around a huge amount of luggage and things like that especially when you know you're going to be on multiple planes multiple trains different kinds of transportation it that's a headache right. i would much rather be underpacked and have to pick up things once I'm there, then carry all of it around and not use some of it. Right. That's like my like nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Same. How about you? Yeah, same. No. Same. Uh, you know, I initially like when I first started traveling, I was like, okay, just you know, you're gonna get a bag, and you're probably gonna check that bag, and just you can bring whatever you can. And here in the states, anyway, you can bring up to fifty pounds of stuff. You know, put fifty pounds of stuff in your bag and. That's going to be fine because you're going to get it anyway. Get, right. your, get your money's worth. But, man, if if I don't have to check a bag, I am not checking a bag. I have made five-day trips with a, a carry-on bag, and it's pretty easy to do. And I know that, like, you could even do longer trips with a carry-on bag and even longer if you are willing to do laundry. But, yeah, I I really don't want to check a bag primarily because not for fear of, like, you know, bags getting lost or misplaced or any of that. But like, I want to get off the plane and I want to go. Right. Like, I I don't want to. I don't want to be held down. I don't want to stop. I don't want to have to like, okay, stand around with these people that I just spent you know X amount of hours on a plane with. I just want to like pew, go. Right. And I also you know there's that kind of nice aspect of like knowing where that my stuff is here and like I've got the things that I need. Totally. But it's kind of funny. Like I mean the the flight that we were just on, when, like going up to New York, I would literally say there were there were probably that that flight was maybe like three quarters full. Yeah, like we had we had rows to ourselves, and then there was a lot of empty rows in the back of the plane. Like it was kind of surprising. But coming back, it was a completely full flight, and the people who were the last to board didn't get the option of whether or not their carry on was going to be a carry on or not. They had to check it. Ooh. It was more or less just like a due to the space being full, we're going to run out of cabin space up above, um, and to minimize the everybody shuffling things around and trying to get things to fit here or there. If you're in the last boarding group, your carry on is getting checked. Right. Which I think in that instance, they might bring those bags up and you get them as you walk off the plane. So it's not as big of a deal, but I'm not really sure. I don't think I feel like so. I've done that before and they've had the luggage like on the, the gangway yeah. walking off. Yeah. I don't know if that's necessarily like a guaranteed every time. No, I don't think so. I know like for like really small planes or like um, like we took a, a flight to uh, Vermont, that, that flight trip we took to Vermont like a couple years ago, they kind of handed you your bag as you got off the plane. Like here, here's it, right. here's everything. I've been to, right. I flew into um, Santa Fe, New Mexico once and like the plane was so small that there was no overhead space. Like the overhead space like literally fit a purse. So wow. even your uh you know carry on bag they're like now nah, we're putting it underneath and they handed it to you like we were all standing outside on the tarmac and they handed you your bag and like here here you go like, oh, that's okay. wild yeah yeah so like when when you're actually packing your bag okay so let, let's say that you are checking a bag and uh it is a I mean, I'm a, definitely planning on checking a bag this time because I need somewhere to put the bottles that I'm bringing home correct they're not going in that carry on. That's that's against the law. Yeah, nowadays. yeah. Unfortunately, in terms of like your luggage itself, are you a, a suitcase guy? Are you a backpack guy? Are you a duffel guy? I, I, I are there trunks? There are trunks. Do people still travel with trunks? 
Somebody probably <laughs> does. Like, what? What is your? I don't what, think so. I haven't, I haven't seen one in a while. What is? What is your? Just in my parents' bedroom because that was like the stylish things that had like the trunk. Oh, yeah. the foot the... So how do you travel? What is your go-to luggage? Um, on on a, on a big trip like we're about to do, I'll definitely have a backpack of essentials that I want to have quick access to while I'm in the plane. That's not usually like a like a carry-on, but in this instance, it may very well be. I may just have like the backpack emptied and flattened inside the suitcase but for this one it's going to be absolutely maximum capacity on every on every sense because i know being gone as long as we will we'll have everything that we can possibly think of that we might need yeah so there'll be there'll be a checked enormously huge checked bag that doesn't exceed 50 pounds <laughs> and they'll there'll be a, a carry-on and the backpack probably yeah because I think you get the you get the one personal item and the carry on. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> like I just started sweating thinking about it. <laughs> yeah. Lugging all that around. For me, uh, just because I generally don't check a bag, it's usually a backpack and like a, a roll on or a roller carry on bag. But same, you know, for a longer trip, even in longer, you know, domestic trips that we've done, you know, it's usually Carol and I can like split a large a large check yeah a large check bag and then we'll take on two carry-ons yeah. and and usually we're pretty good for this for this trip we'll probably do the same uh, i bought a new luggage set that i think that's what we'll do I, you know it's like yeah. a three-piece luggage set so we'll uh we'll we'll figure that out and make that work but like are y'all gonna do like a like a pre pack honestly i think so like this might be yeah. and i know that we talked about you know at the top of the conversation here kind of about that when you start thinking about it but i think in this case for a longer trip um maybe the day before or two days before the trip i'm gonna do like a pre-pack as you're kind of cleaning clothes getting ready clothes ready to go let's just see how all this fits together right what i'll normally do in in a case in any kind of trip like that i'll do like pack some stuff before like that night before like you said um and then like i might do like a last like quick load of laundry of like things that i need that next day or something i don't know just so like everything's you know everything's fresh yeah same let's talk about the actual packing into a bag yeah um there are several different methods and if you've you know everyone listening you can just hop onto youtube real quick and look at a bunch of packing methods but are you someone that folds clothes are you someone that rolls clothes? Or are you someone that just like stuff shit in the bag and hopes for the best? Uh, depends on the item. The, the the first layer of clothing is pretty much just a, a roll and and tuck mm. kind of a situation. But yeah, nah, you know me. <laughs> I do. Like I I'll fold my shorts and my pants and my shirts. All right, try try to keep the wrinkles as minimal as possible, <laughs> and that actually goes to a lot of like you know make sure you're choosing the right you know fabric. Right. Uh, you know you don't want to have a whole lot of like you know pure cottons. So that's just gonna that's going to wrinkle right up. Try to have like some breathable threads, kind of release those wrinkles a little easier. Once mm. you get to the location, can kind of throw those out. You, know. you can buy that. Got to have all that stuff kind of already pre-thought though. You can buy that spray, that wrinkle releaser. Yeah. I mean, you know, hopefully some of the places that we'll be at will have like a, uh, you know, little, little tumble dry, uh, dryer and kind of release some of that though in like a wet washcloth. Yeah. And, uh, kind of steam it, steam it out right quick. But no, yeah. if not, I'm also planning, I think this time I'm at, I'm going to have more like just like t-shirts yeah, and just lighter stuff too. Um, so that, you know, and I, and I plan on buying some t-shirts and things, obviously like all the different places that we're going. So just to kind of keep that kind of quick, lighter options available. I think last time I, everything that I had picked out was too much of a process to trying to manage uh, wrinkles and things like that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lean a little bit more into the, the Nick Johnston wardrobe attire i support it this go around i support i mean everybody on social media is gonna be like uh what happened to kyle but i support it well i mean they'll still be colorful t-shirts oh okay. <laughs> yeah they're not gonna be black and, and, and blue hey and gray sometimes gray yeah thank you <laughs> gray is gray is blue yeah exactly for me yeah i i basically fold everything <laughs> you know i like yeah. kind of nicer dressier clothes like i actually might roll um because like rolling kind of doesn't doesn't really create as many wrinkles uh but things are going right. to get wrinkled and, and you know you're putting stuff in a bag and it's going to get thrown around those those uh you know those those luggage carriers they they don't care and i i get it like you're handling so much luggage like just just throw the stuff around well it's not only that but it's like it's the, it's the thing too of you know you you could potentially pack for a trip right now that you're going 
on a flight that's going to be say it's two hours two hour flight so potentially your 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 items going to be in that bag for like a total of maybe like six hours right you know maybe stuff doesn't really get <laughs> like hammered in whereas the kind of you know flight that we're going on man that stuff's going to be in that bag for like at that point in time almost like 20 hours yeah by the Easy. time you pull it out of that bag so it's, it's had a lot more time of just sitting on that hot plane before you actually get to the destination you're able to pull it all out yeah do you do any kind of like compartments in your luggage i was just gonna ask that um so the the luggage that i've bought like has like the sort of zip up kind of compartment areas but not right packing cubes but i'm interested in the packing cube because yeah from, we're, we're, we're big packing cube yeah what i've seen on, bi on bigger trips okay we are what everything i've seen uh, just, is like I, that's I the way like it just kind of helps it, it it helps unpacking it makes unpacking quicker mm. and and everything a little bit more organized because then once you once you use items you can use a cube as like the dirty and you keep everything much more separated and and organized but yeah we we, we like the packing cubes yeah yeah I, I'm 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 a firm believer though in I don't I don't stress over forgetting something. Yeah. If if it's important enough of a thing, I'll get it when I get there. Obviously, like you know, documentation things like that's a little different, but uh, I don't I don't stress too much over like you know, do we have the right cords? Do we have the right whatever? Do we have Do I have enough of this? Like we'll we'll get some when we get there if it's if it's an absolute necessary. But like I know for this trip compared to last time. I, I keep saying it's like a mantra in my head of like how how can you lighten the load right. this time? And yeah, I keep I keep like thinking like you know th this this past trip to New York this weekend was like a nice little like kind of a <laughs> a trial run of like how light can you go? Kyle wore one pair of shorts for <laughs> twenty one days straight. <laughs> Listen, it Man, can it can be done. You're wearing the same clothes in every in every picture in every place that y'all are at. Like it's weird that you bought that many of the same same shirt you're right it is I weird <laughs> that was the same shirt yeah every day well i i, uh, I was thinking about it like you know uh, i was watching this this travel video and the guy was like um you're never gonna see any of these people ever again so don't think of like you're packing for somebody else or like you want to wear different clothes for somebody else if you can wear a pair of jeans twice and like they're fine wear them twice if you can wear it three days wear them three days you're gonna be okay and Nobody around you is going to give a shit. So pack for you. Don't pack for anybody A lot else. of that's true. It's just, you know, we're also going in June. Sure. Sure. There's going to be a lot of swamp ass. <laughs> Listen. That's it's my, hard to pass that off. That's my middle name. Do you know that? <laughs> yeah, I know it's not a nickname. Like, yeah, that's, like, uh, actually that's, documented yeah, yeah, on your driver's license. It is. It's on my passport, too. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, that's, that's a different. Uh, my wife, even, at that point in time, is like, nah, man. You got to do something about that. <laughs> Those shorts are standing I can't up. Walk, I can't walk downwind of you anymore. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like, nah, I don't want to be seen with you anymore. People are staring. Babies That's are, awful, man. Babies are crying. <laughs> Grown men are crying. <laughs> yeah. Construction workers, they're crying. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Well, you got anything else on travel packing? Not that I can think of. Mm -mm. No, me neither. Last last final thoughts on old overholt for me. Not a bad starter whiskey, a little thin, good for about twenty bucks. Yeah. Can't beat it. Last thoughts on uh fiddlers for you? Love it. Like, I mean it's great. Like, you know, especially for like thirty bucks. Like that's a that's a fantastic, really unique, really different. Would definitely be interested to try more stuff from there. Yeah. Awesome. Would really like to go to the distillery. Like I think it's like Ooh. just outside of Atlanta. Or actually I guess it might be right downtown. I don't know. But anyway. We can probably make that um, happen. Yeah, I mean I go through Atlanta. I don't know. Kind of often. <laughs> I don't know what you what you call often every couple of years or so. Semi annually. Yeah, just about. Well, we'd love to know what you think about the old Overholt bottle and bond or or the Fiddler Unison Bourbon Whiskey from ASW Distillery. We also want to know, what are your travel packing philosophies? Because you're probably in the midst of packing for a trip right now, or you're about to be if you're traveling at all this summer. What's that one tip that you've got that, like, you saw it, it was like a you know a life hack kind of a thing, you started utilizing it, and it was a game changer? Ooh, that's a good one. I We, we need those. Yeah. For sure. Well, you can get in touch with us through email. It's trippingstone at gmail.com. You can also get in touch with us through social media. 
So Dreppin' Stone, D-R-E-P, and Stone, come find us, like a thing, share a thing, comment on a thing, and we'd appreciate all those things. We'd also love it if you support the podcast. You can do that in a couple of ways. Uh, the first way is just tell someone about Dreppin' Stone. Just like on your travels, you meet some random person on the subway in New York City, and you're like, hey, have you heard about Dreppin' yeah. Stone? Reach over to that guy sitting next to you and just pluck out the the the, the earbud. <laughs> hey, you listening to Dreppin' Stone? <laughs> no? Sorry. And stick it right back in. <laughs> yeah, you should. All right. Just listen to the new episode. They're talking about travel. It's fantastic. All right. All right. Love you. Bye. <laughs> Stick it back. <laughs> Love you. Bye. <laughs> As it gets up and beats your ass. <laughs> oh, okay. I said, Love you. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I was polite. <laughs> You can also support the podcast by rating Drep and Stone, whatever it is. You find great podcasts like this one. And finally, Kyle, the best way to support Drep and Stone because, you know, it keeps the lights on, keeps the fan running because it's still the summer. The classiest way to do it is through Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Drep and Stone. Right now, there's a lot of really cool content going on right there. Indeed. Yeah, like some behind the scenes trip information. Ooh. Ooh. I know you're gonna wanna you're gonna wanna go over there. Like I'm going over there right now just to see just to see what's going on. Yeah, indeed. Anyway, hey buddy. Hey buddy. May your glass overflow and your ass never show. How do we virtual clink? You wanna just touch the mics together or the cameras together? How do we do that? Uh, clink. <laughs> doesn't work on the mic. No, cause like the mic's got a little thingy on it. Doesn't it? Well, oh shit. You, bro <laughs> you broke it, didn't you? I knocked it off the little stand. There we go. Well, uh, virtu right. virtual clink. Vir virtual clink. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. Ready? Ready. <laughs> settle down, settle down. <laughs> like I can I can hear the dogs walking. I'm like what? No way. No, like seriously. Like I I'll, I'll I'll send you the audio. You can hear the dogs walking. You can find old over old, 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 old. You can find old overholt basically anywhere. Don't got boxers, but I got a hell of a lot of baby powder. <laughs> baby powder and just I made my own. <laughs> I took a garbage toilet paper and <laughs> I took a garbage bag and some toilet paper. We're good. Masking tape. Here it goes. Here yeah. it goes. Yep, I see it. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll send you another link. Okay. Yeah, we, and and definitely at that point in time with kids that like could not carry their own weight, so it was I, a lot of times I was carrying like two carry ons, a huge suitcase, and a backpack on my back. Stairs were my enemy. <laughs> Kyle Sherpa, legit. And a lot, of, a lot of those times, it's like you find a staircase. It's like, all right, y'all stay up here, and like I'll I'll take three bags down, drop those, go back up, get three more, take those down, go back up. Nah, that's when you just slow like, moving. That's when you just chuck the bag down the stairs and hope for the best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all the locals are like, God, Americans, damn it. <laughs> yeah, seriously, stay home next time. You knocked what? I just had it clipped on to the the thing here. Well, if you must oh, know. Oh, get it back on there.